Diamonds, they sparkle, they glitter, they make you feel like a princess and they're supposed to be our very best friend. Recently, there is a new kid on the block. It's a synthetic diamond which is supposed to be environmentally friendly and come at a better price. So, what's not to like? Hi, my name is Karen Kastens. I'm a Danish jeweler and I create my bespoke jewelry in my jewelry workshop here in Copenhagen. So what is a synthetic diamond? Well, it's not a cubic zirconia or moissanite or any other simulant. It is an actual diamond. Physically and chemically, they are exactly the same. To the naked eye, there is no visible difference. You can see the difference under special lights and stuff like that. 89% of all the synthetic diamonds are actually not made for jewelry, they are made for the industry. You will find them on drills and saw blades and the like. They have been big business for decades, but now that it has been possible to create jewelry grade diamonds, this is on the rise as well. There's quite a confusion about the name. They're being called all sorts of things. We call them lab created diamonds, man made diamonds, HPHT diamonds, CBP diamonds, cultured diamonds, grown diamonds, but we just call them synthetic diamonds, then everybody knows what we're talking about. So are synthetic diamonds as environmentally friendly as they're hyped to be? Well, that very much depends on who creates them and especially how. The how part is about how much energy was used and where does that energy come from? In other words, the carbon footprint. Now in China, which currently churns out 200,000 carat a month, that is a lot, um, energy comes from the normal uh, energy sources. That means you dig a hole in the ground, take up a lot of coal, burn this coal and then you have energy. Obviously as, of, uh, as a carbon footprint this is not very good. You're basically back to square one and I'll get back to that. Um, the uh, synthetic diamonds in some few factories such as Diamond Foundry um, are created with uh, renewable electric sources such as uh, windmills and uh, solar cells and the like. So they are a much better choice for the environment. So how do the natural diamonds come by? Well, you dig a very large hole in the ground, just like with coal, um, move a lot of soil, which obviously have a large impact on the local wildlife and farmability of the area, uh, and you also use quite a bit of water in order to extract the diamonds from the soil. So in other words, comparing the carbon footprint of a natural diamond and a synthetic diamond is really, really difficult because we have information asymmetry uh, and we're still waiting for uh, the synthetic diamond industry to become a lot more transparent like the natural diamond uh, industry. Then there is a social issue. The mining companies in general provide a lot of work in areas with uh, often uh, high poverty um, and therefore they do contribute a lot to the local economy. They also uh, do a lot for local communities um, and in general, mostly at least, tidy up after themselves, close down the hole again, etc. The factories producing synthetic diamonds, on the other hand, uh, are not required in the same way to uh, live up to certain regulations. Um, and they do not contribute to the local uh, economy in nearly the same way as the mining companies do. Then there's the issue of the blood diamonds, also known as conflict diamonds. These diamonds are used to fund military actions against legitimate internationally rec recognized governments. You may have heard about them in the movie Blood Diamond, starring uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, who later became an investor and promoter of uh, the company Diamond Foundry, producing synthetic diamonds. The kimberley clark process should have uh, solved these issues by large. 0.2% um, of the diamonds in the trade are still uh, considered of, uh, to be conflict diamonds, which is substantially less than the 15% uh, which were feared to be conflict diamonds in the 90s. 
The price is obviously another really big reason why you would want to buy a synthetic diamond. Currently, uh, synthetic diamonds are about 30 to 40% cheaper than natural diamonds. Um, but the price is going down really, really fast. In China, for instance, um, the price is already down to around 50%. It very much depends, however, on, again, how the diamond was made. Factories using renewable energy sources produce more expensive diamonds than the ones using uh, coal-fueled energy. And onto the stage of the battle of the price of synthetic diamonds, the grand old man De Beers has just stepped. They used to dismiss synthetic diamonds completely, but with their daughter company Lightbox, they have now changed their attitude to, if you can't beat them, join them, and then beat them from the inside. Because what De Beers is doing is trying to bring down the hype of the synthetic diamond to its rightful level, as they call it. They think that synthetic diamonds are brilliant, pun intended, uh, for fashion jewelry. <clears throat> so fun jewelry, but not the uh, important jewelry. They do this by selling a one carat diamond for as little as $800. That is ridiculous. That is 15% of what a natural diamond costs. In comparison, uh, a one carat diamond from Diamond Foundry, again, these are the more expensive ones, is being sold for $3,000. So what will the future of synthetic diamonds look like? Well, currently 4% of all diamonds being traded are synthetics, but it is expected that uh, this number will rise very much and even eclipse the natural diamonds eventually. However, the more synthetic diamonds will come to the market, the more the price will plummet, and it is currently in free fall. Since natural diamonds are a limited resource and the synthetic diamonds are a renewable resource, this automatically, of course, makes the natural ones more rare and hence more precious. Which also means that uh, the resale value of synthetic diamonds will be close to nothing in a few years. Um, this is, of course, because um, it is the gem's rarity which is maintaining its monetary value. I also do predict that um, a gem such as morsenite will actually disappear completely. Uh, we will see cubic zirconia still in silver jewelry, but the low carat gold jewelry will probably feature synthetic diamonds in future. So your choice whether you're going to purchase a natural diamond or a synthetic diamond completely depends on your reasons to do so. If the environment is important to you, you have two options. Option number one is a synthetic diamond, as long as it has been produced with a very small carbon footprint, so not the Chinese ones. Um, and you need to really make sure where this specific diamond comes from. Your second choice um, is actually always the best choice, and that is recycling an old diamond. The carbon footprint of this one is already existing, you can't change it, but at least you're not creating even more. If you want to beat poverty and help the third world, then go for natural diamond and support the mines who are providing work. If uh, the conflict-free diamond, the non-blood diamond, is important to you, you again have two options. Option number one are the synthetic diamonds, definitely. Option number two are natural diamonds from Australia or Canada. Uh, especially Canada has uh, created a whole business around this. They've developed the Canadian mark, uh, which is being engraved into the girdle uh, of a diamond and it comes with, your, with its very own certificate. However, the Canadian diamonds are the most expensive natural diamonds on the market. If price is the most important to you, you have three options. Option number one, synthetic diamonds. They are cheaper. However, again, be aware that the price is still falling rapidly. And so if you can wait, wait for another three to five years. Uh, we expect that the price of uh, the synthetic diamond will then have found a more stable level. Option number two is a placeholder. So either a cubic zirconia or a more natural gem such as a topaz or a, a white sapphire then you can exchange it for whatever you want, either a now cheaper synthetic diamond uh, or a bigger, lovely natural diamond later when you have the money. 
And option number three um, is go for natural diamond, but buy one which is a bit smaller and maybe of a less fabulous quality. You can still get something really, really, really nice for your money. So to sum up, synthetic diamonds definitely have a time and a place. I would, for instance, love to create bridal jewelry using synthetic diamonds. You can get a lot of glitter for a lot less money, at least in future. Um, but no matter what, I will set whichever diamond you want in your piece of jewelry. It is your choice, not mine. Jewelry is basically pointless as a means of survival. You can't eat it, it won't keep you warm. Instead, jewelry is all about memories and emotions. The classic, of course, being engagement rings and uh, wedding rings, which hopefully makes you feel special and loved. Because diamonds are so enormously durable, they will continue on way after you have died. And that means that future generations will inherit your diamond and use it and hopefully cherish it. So you need to decide which sort of diamond are you going to give to your future generations, which emotions and which preferences follow along with this diamond. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you feel that you can make a bit more informed choice next time you're going to purchase a diamond.